Hello X Plus Report, a compilation of the stories and events that made the news recently. Welcome, I'm Jacinta Obiuko. In a bid to acknowledge heroism, the need to be consciously supportive of the Nigerian military and the armed forces have been emphasized. Defense and security journalists believe this is important because such servicemen signed their lives to defend Nigeria. At an event of the association in Lagos, Nigeria, football supporters club came to render their support as well. This group is under the ages Hashtag prayer for the Nigerian armed forces and other security agencies. Sometimes there's journalist experience going into active duty with the Nigerian military and the armed forces just to report on them. And this gives an idea of how much sacrifice our law enforcement agencies put in just to ensure a safe heaven on our lands and waterways. They want you and me to join them in prayers. Our military is the best. I think people seem not to know what they are doing. They are just looking at the surface. If they move around with them and they know, they will not be condemning these people. In Africa, as a whole, American military will tell you that Nigeria is the best. They are so good. And I begin to wonder that if these people are so good, what is happening that I know? Of course, what is really happening, there are some people who are sabotaging their effort and does not want this war to end. So what do we do? We need to pray. Prayer and support for the Nigeria um, Armed Forces and um, other security agencies is um, born out of the need to support the um, military and other security agencies, in the fight, specifically in the fight against them. Insecurity, insurgency, kidnapping, we are all in Nigeria. We know the, the dimension at which um, um, insecurity has assumed. It has assumed a worrisome uh, dimension and we have this military, they've, they've been overstretched. The group visits Dr. Rafiu Oladipo, the president of Nigerian Supporters Club for decades. He also speaks well of Nigerian military. He believes they are one of the best in the world and we should support them in prayers, as he does for the super eagles. For our military, I drop my heart to them. These are great people, great men and women, who will deny themselves of several things. They deserve our praises. They deserve our support. So you guys, you have been praying it shouldn't be left to you. It should be all of us as Nigerians that must be involved. Nigerian armed forces sacrifice their comfort, loved ones, and sometimes their lives to ensure the safety of Nigerian citizens. Kindly say prayer for our armed forces today. Destiny Mama. For Plus TV Africa. The armed forces and other security services deserve the prayers and commendations of Nigerians for laying down their lives to defend the country's unity and the territorial integrity. The Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency and the Armed Forces have celebrated trainees of the Deep Blue Project who graduated recently. The training and the project are important for the safety of Nigeria's waterways as the assets under the Deep Blue project would be given necessary protection to serve their purpose of providing security for the entire Gulf of Guinea. Plus TV Africa's Ngozi Kaohai Jesse has more. Just a few months ago, President Muhammadu Buhari launched the Deep Blue project in Lagos. The Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency in Imasa and the emphasis were given a mandate of tackling piracy, sea robbery and other crimes at sea. Today, 42 Air Force personnel are graduating after undergoing training for the safety, security and sanity of Nigerian's oceans front. Nimasa, the Nigerian Army, Navy and Air Force can't be happier. We cannot leave our security arrangement and operation in the hands of foreigners. 
That is why this is very important. As you, you graduate today and begin this enormous task of watching over our maritime domain from above the sky, I leave you with this watchword. Vigilance, vigilance, vigilance. I congratulate you on this momentous occasion, which signifies your attainment of a major milestone in your various careers. Next is a brief tour of the assets to be used by the graduates. And the award of certificates. With the airmen and women done with their training, Bashi Ujamo explains what is next. The next is uh, operations. We will have to deploy the assets now. Uh, even before now, the asset has been deployed. Uh, we train some of them abroad, or most of them abroad. The remaining uh, courses that they're supposed to take abroad because of the COVID-19 restrictions. The Deputy Governor of Ondo State advises the graduates to continue to train themselves so they can be perfect. So they need to upgrade and improve themselves and pay attention and be committed to this work. No sabotage of any kind. They need to be coming because it's a national call to duty for them. The initiative of the Deep Blue Project is not only about security, but also for proper regulation. So waterways and oceans can be safe for all the people engaged in maritime business in Nigeria. For Plus TV Africa, Ngozika Ohaichesi. Now the graduation of the Air Asset Crew was another significant leg of the Deep Blue project, which the Director General described as the agency's grand intervention in maritime security. Nigeria is confronted with daunting challenges occasioned by insurgency and terrorism. And in an effort to combat terrorism, the Nigerian Air Force says it is winning the war against terror in Nigeria. National security is a major concern in Nigeria's development and the law enforcement agencies say they are working in synergy to combat terrorism in the country. Recently, the Air Force has had their fair share of crashed helicopters in the course of battle against terrorism. However, its spokesman, Edward Gabquet, says they are undeterred as the war against terror is being won. Absolutely very well, uh, in conjunction with the Nigerian Army and Nigerian Navy, uh, the synergy, the jointness that has been brought to bear with regards to the war against insurgency, banditry, has been yielding very fantastic results. And as we have seen, some of the terrorists have started surrendering willingly, you know, clearly an indication that uh, the cooperation that has been brought in the fight against uh, insurgency is, is really winning. Gapquet also speaks on the plan of the force to improve its capacity to protect the nation's territorial integrity. Last six years, the administration of President Mahmoud Buhari has been very, very kind to the Nigerian Air Force. Uh, as at the last count, we have over 30 brand new aircrafts that have been purchased for the service. Uh, these platforms have gone a long way in ensuring that we become, uh, we remain very relevant with regards to our operations. Uh, we have also been very fortunate that uh, the federal government has supported us in also revamping those fleets that were grounded uh, in the past. Engineers have also been well trained and uh, generally it's, uh, a lot of things are going on that uh, we only give thanks to the President and Commander-in-Chief. As the set of service chiefs is seemingly in sync with their readiness to combat terrorism in Nigeria, there is hope for better results. Destiny Momo for Plus TV Africa. The Nigerian Air Force also said it is fully prepared to respond to possible terror attacks across Nigeria's airports as they remain committed to supporting other security agencies in reducing the activities of insurgents and militants in Nigeria. 
recently peace has returned to the three local government areas where the state government imposed curfews following the killing of some travelers. The state commissioner for information, Dan Mangjang, had told Plus TV Africa that the government is currently holding talks with stakeholders to ensure the peace is sustained. Plus TV Africa's Messi spoke with him on the phone. Tempers are high in Plateau State, where 22 people were killed on Saturday. The state government has since imposed curfews in three local government areas, just north, just south, and Basa. The University of Jos has also suspended examinations, which could have started on Monday. But the Commissioner for Information and Communication, Dan Manjang, tells me that 17 local government areas in the state are now peaceful. The atmosphere in Plateau State right now is calm. But uh, even when we talk about Plateau State, it means the entire 17 local governments. But you know that uh, this issue is not in all the 17 local governments. Uh, it's in the in three local governments of just, no just north, just south, and then uh, Basa local government. And so the situation is calm. As I talk to you right now, His Excellency, the Governor of Plateau State, the Right Honorable Simon Bakola Long, uh, is going around uh, to see... On this, to do an on-the-spot assessment of the situation. Saturday's killings come less than two weeks after scores of houses were destroyed in Miango, an Irigwe chiefdom in Basa local government. The Iriguays are accused of carrying out the latest mayhem, but they deny that. Ironically, the killings took place as native Iriguays were burying persons killed in the Miango attack. This points to build up tension, often along tribal lines. The Information Commissioner, Manjang, says the government had set up institutions in the past to force the peace among conflicting interest groups. We have been assisting security with equipment, buying vehicles for them and motorcycles and assisting, assisting them financially. And that is why we, we, it's because of what we have been able to do that we have uh, secured Plateau State by the, thus far. Uh, in the life of this administration, six and a half years, we have enjoyed relative peace, and it is because of the institutional framework and because of the, the, the proactive measures that the state gov government has been able to put in place. And that is why we have what is called Plateau State today. In the midst of these killings and attacks in Plateau State, experts are calling for caution and engagement so the situation doesn't get worse. Messi Ebopo for Plus TV Africa. You're watching Plus Reports. There is more after this break. Thanks for staying with us. Now to oil theft. As a way of addressing the issues in River State, the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps has paraded eight fake naval officers on an illegal escort in Port Harcourt. The impersonators were paraded alongside 29 suspected oil thieves. The State Commandant Mokta Lawal said this while parading the suspects and seized trucks before journalists. Details here. The state commandant of the NSCDC, Aliyu Baturi, who disclosed this in Port Harcourt while parading some of the suspects, stated that four trucks containing illegal refined petroleum products were among items seized from the suspects. Baturi says officers of the command intercepted a truck containing petroleum products, suspected to be automotive gas oil, popularly called diesel, along UTC Junction in Port Harcourt, following credible intelligence. We are parading 10 suspects of oil tips and four trucks conveying suspected illegal refined products. On the 16th of August 2021, at about 11.30 hours, the command arrested five suspects conveying suspected stolen AGO stuck in a sack in a trailer truck with registration number JJ 552 SD along Trans Amadi area. Some of the arrested suspects confessed to the crime, while the rest are currently undergoing thorough investigation and will be charged to cause in due course. 
The commandant who recently assumed office vowed to put everything in place to nip crime rates on the board, especially those relating to illegal oil businesses, and protect the country's critical assets in the state. I was arrested at Igu Island with three suspects. It contained an NGO suspected to be adulterated illegally refined products. Our message to the public is that we are not relented in dealing with all Ill illegal bunkers. And we go to carry, then cause to go and carry something. Then from there, as we reach there, they unload the team, the time when they unload the team, me are not there around. So they come tell us, make we go. As we come there, to come move from there, I come see security against us. I hear because of uh, uh, my friend uh, called me to come and uh, direct. Uh, uh, motor, motor tanker to equal a road where we know road. That from there they arrested me. Patrick warned those involved in illegal oil deals and other criminal activities across the state to stop and urged residents to report strange movements in their areas for prompt action. Nigerians have tried a number of strategies to tackle its oil loss problems, and the hope is that the issues will be resolved. Moving on, public opinion intense on the kidnapped of students and staff of the Zamfara State College of Agriculture of Animal Sciences. Stakeholders are reacting to this with a call for a state of emergency on Nigeria's security and education sectors. Aneta Felix has the details. Students of the Zamfara State College of Agriculture and Animal Sciences bound by their hands, blindfolded, surrounded by terrorists and pleading to be saved. Fifteen students and four teachers of the school were kidnapped on Sunday, while four others died in the attack. On PLOS TV Africa's breakfast show, public affairs analyst Nick Agule calls out the president of Nigeria, Muhammad Buhari, for failing to fulfill his promise to protect school children. President Muhammad Buhari looked the nation in the face directly and told the nation that the kidnapping, the school kidnapping, that happened was it in Niger State some months ago, would be the last school kidnapping in Nigeria. And since the president made that statement, we have had several school kidnapping thereafter. One would expect that if a president looks the citizens in the face and makes a commitment, that he actually has the mind to follow through on that commitment. He also suggests ways to track the location of the bandits. Government could have installed trackers on those bikes before they were handed over to the kidnappers. And once the bikes were handed over to the kidnappers, the government have been point with precision where those bikes are moving. And they can go to that particular spot, round up the bandits, kill them or arrest them, depending on their choice. According to Agule, it's high time the government declared a state of emergency on Nigeria's education sector. They need to declare emergency in the security sector, and we need a, a state of emergency in the education sector. But the government of Nigeria has not taken even simple steps like that, where they can put a communication system in place with every school giving a dedicated phone line to call for security response if their school is under attack. The abductors are demanding a ransom of 350 million naira before they would release them. But the government is yet to respond. Aneta, Felix, Plus TV Africa. Nigeria will be distributing the recently received doses of COVID-19 vaccines to rural communities. It is a new batch of 173,600 doses of the Johnson & Johnson jab procured through the African Union. Officials said the vaccines will be strategically deployed to cover areas that have difficult terrains. 
173,600 doses of the Johnson and Johnson vaccine arrived in Nigeria on Thursday and were received by the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency. The executive director of the MPHCDA explains that the doses make up the first batch that Nigeria will be receiving. This is the first batch out of the 29 million 850,000 doses that we are going to be getting. The expectation is that again through uh, our collaboration with the African Union, uh, the AVAX uh, and African Bank. The plan for Nigeria is to have 60% of the population vaccinated before the end of the year. And for the cooperating partners, it is to deliver vaccines to all member countries in Africa with the goal of closing the gap with other continents. This vaccine acquisition is a unique milestone for African continent and it is the first time Africa has undertaken a procurement of this magnitude involving all member states. WHO had on many occasions commended the government of Nigeria, particularly the Presidential Syrian Committee on COVID-19, on the successful completion of the first phase of the COVID-19 vaccination rollout. May I also and use this opportunity to congratulate the ED of MPCDHA and the Nigerian government for your forethought uh, and preparedness to procure 29.8 million doses of Johnson & Johnson through the AFAD facility. The executive director of the MPHCDA warns the media to sensitize Nigerians on the safety and importance of taking the vaccine amid fears and conspiracy theories. We will continue to count on you, the media, for dissemination of true and accurate information to keep Nigerians informed and educated about COVID-19 vaccination. We also hope that those who are misinforming people will begin to understand the need for Nigeria and the rest of the world to overcome the COVID-19 pandemic. The World Health Organization ranks Nigeria COVID-19 response as the fourth best in the world. And Nigeria is the seventh recipient of the Janssen and Janssen vaccine in Africa. It is also a reminder that COVID-19 is very much real and deadly. Please do well to get vaccinated. Young African Leaders Initiative alumni under the umbrella of Public Affairs Section of the United States Consulate General Lagos have gathered to discuss result-oriented means to carry out their project in different sectors and communities for Nigerians' development. Since inception in 2010, the reception is the first time all the three components of YALI alumni, Mandela Washington Fellowship, Regional Leadership Center, and the YALI Network will gather to highness the value of volunteerism and the strength of alumni network towards supporting youths to create positive change in their communities. It's an investment in the future. It's an investment in the future of Nigeria. It's an investment in the future of your lives, the potential of your lives, the promise that all of you hold inside you, the promise that you hold inside all of the passion that you have, the promise that, that is really a part and parcel of this program. This is the section to bear their minds the things they think will be more resort-oriented and some of their challenges the interactions between the alumni members and executives of the U.S. consulate and embassies enhanced and encouraged, it could be a very good way for us to go. It could be a very good source of encouragement for us as young people. If uh, the U.S. consulate can somewhat institutionalize the process of that knowledge sharing, I think a lot more people can benefit from organizational sustainability, financing the organization, and so many things. If we have like maybe once in a year or twice in a year, um, MWF or Yali Network Expo, where the U.S. mission brings the best of the best that they have. We don't know what can actually happen in terms of 
relationship business-wise and some other things. So that's what I'm looking at. U.S. Consulate General believes this meeting will go a long way actualizing the core values of the program. What came out of this discussion, and I'm very glad we had it, is that we need more collaboration among all the different alumni. So, I mean, now it's... 2021 so we're in year 11 and so we need to really make sure that we've have so many alumni and they're spread all across Nigeria so we need to find ways really to bring them together. First of all to build others we have to build ourselves and to build ourselves we have to understand each other and that's why we are here today to understand each other so that we can build others. The thrust here is the supporting youth-led sustainable development that centers around enhancing the capacity of young people we will enable them develop and implement their own solutions to global challenges. YALI is a movement for inspiring youths across the continent to create positive changes by equipping a new generation of leaders with the skills and values that are helping to shape the future of the continent. And it's a wrap now, but before we go, let's to remind you to follow us at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram and you subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. I'm Jacinta Obiuku. Thanks for watching.